How do you think San Francisco's handled those, those quarterback situations? How do you think they've handled them? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's just not. It's, uh, I think it's it messy. It I'll, I'll put it that way. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice way to put it. Um, you know, Jimmy, is, the comments are the comments. I'm really not concerned about his comments. If you're a 49ers fan, the Jimmy Garoppolo topic, it it doesn't go away. It just kind of evolves. It changes and morphs. Now Raiders quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo did the media rounds this week. Uh, Honestly, it's kind of funny because I feel like I never heard him speak as a Niner. Uh, This week, he stopped in for an interview with SI's Robin Lundgren. In the interview, Robin asked Jimmy what he thought about the Niners quarterback room and their decision to ultimately trade Trey Lance and name Sam Darnold the backup. What did you make of the, the Trey Lance trade to Dallas? Uh, you know, weird situation. Been a lot of weird situations over there in San Francisco. Uh, just to leave it at that. Uh, Kyle Shanahan actually fired back in a press conference this week. Longtime Bay Area reporter Matt Mayoko asked him about the quarterback room and Jimmy's comments, and he said, "Yeah, I think anytime you trade up into the third pick in the draft and it doesn't work out, that's a weird situation." But. That is the situation. So that's what happened. I don't think it's that weird. It's unusual that doesn't work out. But I wouldn't think that's weird. I think it's unusual. What do you think? The fact that he said goodbye, you know, the day after that one season's over, and he's, you know, all all the things that happened with him physically. He comes back. He's, you know, on on the side field and ends up resigning and starting. And it just seems like, I mean, it's been a unique. And do you remember why that happened? why everything happened but i'm just saying it's been a unique situation i agree it's been unique (laughs) he also kind of buried jimmy a little bit he said when you have a quarterback that can't stay healthy when you trade up to the number three pick and it doesn't work out yeah it's a little strange you know when we got here we we waited 10 weeks made a trade for a quarterback played five games and then we made him the highest paid quarterback of all time at the time um then he played two of the next five years and did really good in those two years. It's, his injuries for three of those five years were legit. It was rough on him, rough on us. Um, and then we made a move to go to a younger quarterback, and that's what we did. Um, we thought he'd be ready in two years, and he wasn't. And now we have a different younger quarterback. So that's the situation. Kyle, I got to tell you, as a 49ers fan, I felt like I never heard Jimmy speak, like I mentioned. But um, now as a Raiders quarterback, it seems like he's all giddy to go out there and do the media. Uh, so what do you think of Garoppolo's comments? Do you think he was out of line with anything he said? Well, I, I mean, I feel like former 49ers quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo commenting on the Trey Lance situation was uh, was completely out of line. Because what would Jimmy Garoppolo know about being the starting quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers, who then is unceremoniously replaced by a young quarterback without getting any heads up that something like that is happening? What would Jimmy Garoppolo ever know about that right right yeah they treated jimmy garoppolo exactly the same way they treated trey lance at the end and look garoppolo purgatory is a real thing man the the 49er fan has been stuck in jimmy garoppolo purgatory for years they tried to draft a quarterback to replace him and jimmy spent two more seasons on that team somehow technically speaking him and that quarterback they drafted to replace him lasted the same amount of time right because Jimmy played until the end of last season Trey Lance played until the end of last season if you count Trey Lance breaking his leg technically Jimmy Garoppolo outlasted the quarterback they drafted to replace him in San Francisco because he played a game more recently so Jimmy Garoppolo purgatory will never ever end and I think that Garoppolo's comments were fun. I like that the 49ers quarterback room is all of a sudden it's it's become like once is a fluke, twice is a pattern, three is a tendency. And now that we're on the third quarterback mess up for the 49ers, all of a sudden people are coming out and questioning openly Kyle Shanahan. I like that part of it. So I think it's fun when we have drama like this. Well, who do you think is under more pressure this year? Jimmy Garoppolo for making those comments and kind of burying Shanahan or Shanahan in his first full season that he won't have Jimmy Garoppolo on the team. I guess I want to say Shanahan more so because of the team expectations. Like I know Colin Cowherd is saying the Raiders are going to win 10 games and there's people who think the Raiders are a sneaky. Look, the Raiders are bad. Okay. The Raiders are not going to be good this year. 
Jimmy Garoppolo uh, is going to be replaced by Aiden O'Connell at some point during the season, either because of performance or injury. It's just going to happen. The defense is going to allow 28 points a game. It's, it's just part of the equation for the Raiders this year. So I think the Raiders don't have that same level of expectation. And I mean, at this point, wouldn't you say Garoppolo is a made man at this point? Like, I don't think there's anything that's going to happen in the next three to five years that's really going to change our perception of Jimmy Garoppolo. Hell, this year might be the last time he gets I disagree a with that. to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. I disagree with that because if Jimmy Garoppolo goes out there and does what Jimmy Garoppolo has done his whole career and win at a 70% winning percentage, then I think it would change Garoppolo's perception in a positive direction. Now, if the Raiders, as you mentioned, were a four win mess and Garoppolo got replaced mid season, then it would validate anyone who ever said that Jimmy Garoppolo was anything less than what I and some other 49ers fans have viewed him as throughout his career, which I view him as a winning quarterback. I viewed him as top 10 in the league at one point. And, you know, now that he's in this AFC and the, the AFC is loaded at quarterback, I still think that he can hold his own. Like, I don't think the Raiders are going to be as bad as they were last season. If for nothing else, I kind of feel like Jimmy Garoppolo might actually be a better fit than Derek Carr. Some things that Jimmy does well Carr doesn't like yes Carr has better deep ball accuracy fine that that is what it is but what I think that Jimmy brings to this team is you know he does have a little bit of that gunslinger playmaker mentality and sometimes that's got him in trouble but what I've always appreciated about Garoppolo is his ability to bounce back have a short memory it's kind of a diss but it's also kind of a good thing for him he's always had kind of a goldfish memory like he'll throw an interception he'll make a bad play and then the next series he'll come back stronger now the Raiders uh, they just Got Josh Jacobs back on this team after his hold-in, hold-out situation, whatever you want to call it. Obviously, Devontae Adams is still hanging around there. Josh McDaniels, there is some familiarity between the two. Obviously, Garoppolo being a Patriot to start his career when McDaniels was there. The Raiders' defense has never been a strong point, but hey, they have top 25 NFL 100 player Max Crosby there to cause quarterbacks all kinds of issues. So, I, I do think that the Raiders have a little juice. And if let's be honest, if they didn't lose four or five games last year that they had double digit point leads in, they would have been a, in a much better spot than they ended up being. Ultimately, we talked about the scenario where they end up winning four games or something like that this year. We talked about the scenario where maybe they do win 10 games and sneak in the playoffs and Garoppolo wins at that 70 percent clip you were talking about. I think the middle of the pack is kind of the more interesting space because at this point and I think you would agree with this uh, Garoppolo is playing like year to year in terms of his chances to be a starter in the NFL he is in that kind of Marcus Mariota territory now where he's like on the fringe of being a starter in the NFL but also could be a backup I mean he was supposed to be the Niners backup last year and then he was a starter for the Raiders this year. So I, I feel like if it's in the middle, it, it's going to be interesting to have the Garoppolo conversation in 2024, because I don't see a world where he elevates this Raider team specifically. Although I've been wrong before, it could work out for Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo purgatory works in mysterious ways at times. Well, a lot of the discourse for 49ers fans has been, that Garoppolo only is what he is because Kyle can scheme wide open wide receivers for him to hit or not hit, because that's also been part of the discussion for 49ers fans when it comes to Garoppolo and his ability to just complete basic passes. But when you look at the stats, like, heck, even last year, he was top five in all these major quarterback stats. And I feel as though, and this is going back all the way to the very beginning, 2017, I feel as though 49ers teammates have a way of gravitating around Jimmy. Now, I know things ended weird in New England. Different culture over there, obviously, when you have Tom Brady and everyone's used to how Tom Brady is. But aside from Edelman's comments and uh, Bennett's comments, I feel like Jimmy Garoppolo has been a generally well-liked teammate. And I, I do feel as though that what he can bring is he gives a energy that guys want to play for and guys want to gravitate towards. So I feel like that's something, I don't know. I don't know if Derek Carr brought that. Obviously, Devontae and Derek Carr were best friends, so there was a connection there. But as teammates in with the Raiders last year, we didn't really see that translate. Uh, obviously, it didn't help that Darren Waller was hurt all year. Hunter Renfro was hurt all year. So those are things that impacted the Raiders as well. Again, you know, it's just going to come down to, and even more so than Garoppolo, Josh McDaniels, the fact that 
McDaniels was the head coach during all these blown leads. Because again, you, the Raiders, if we just give them three of those back, three do-overs in those games that they just pissed away, then their their season, we're looking at it completely different. And the one thing I said coming off the Rich Vespaccio year, you know, is they couldn't get worse with McDaniels. That was the big barometer I was going to look at him at. And the fact that they got worse was disappointing because they didn't really lose much from the previous year's team that was a playoff team. Yes, and and I've done this before. I brought the nerd stats out and proved that like the Basaccia year and the McDaniels year, they were actually basically the exact same team. Like their DVOA was 18th in the league versus 17th in the league. Their offense was slightly better under McDaniels than the Basaccia season, but their defense took a step back. They were basically the same team. The only difference was they went like six and one in one score games in 2021, and they blew five double digit leads in 2022. But they can I say, aside from the nerd stats, though, it, just going away from that, like the fact that that the Raiders made the playoff that year was so impressive given that they had a lot going on. They had their coach fired mid season. The guy who was building everything, the guy that every player in that roster was on that roster because of him in John Gruden, because of the comments that emails that leaked out. And then you had their first round draft pick, Henry Ruggs III literally kill a woman and her dog in a fiery crash. Obviously, Henry Ruggs, he got sentenced this year. That's a whole different story. But the fact that that's happened in the same season and the Raiders still made the playoffs, I think is way more impressive. And McDaniels coming in last year, he didn't have to deal with any of that. He was supposed to be the guy that turned around the culture and none of that was even on the table. Luckily for the Raiders, I don't remember any big off the field issues as opposed to the previous year. Heck, I even forgot uh, David Arnett and him going on IG Live, too, with his uh, machine gun like and threatening people. That was also another thing from the previous year, and they still, again, made the playoffs that season. What one person says is impressive, I say is improbable. It was improbable that the Raiders made the playoff that year, and yet they got there anyways. And so this year's team is no better or worse than last year's team because they didn't really add anyone. I mean, they got Tyree Wilson in the draft, and obviously he could be an absolute stud. Some people were saying he was a top five prospect in the draft class and fell to the Raiders at seven. So obviously adding Tyree Wilson is going to help. But other than that, they didn't really add anything to the team. The difference between Derek Carr and Garoppolo, I mean, Carr had a bad year last year, but I think if you take the averages of those two I think it's not a significant change in what's going to happen to the Raiders results wise and the rest of the team is pretty much the same I mean minus Darren Waller who wasn't there last year because of injuries uh, most of the team is about the same their expected win total is about like six and a half this year so you know people are saying they're going to be in that seven and ten territory which say that two of those games they blew those double digit second half leads go their way then they would have been a seven and 10 team last year. So if they're in that seven and 10 space and Garoppolo plays uh, to about Garoppolo's average for the last call it four years of his career, I think it'll be interesting to see what decision the Raiders make at the end of the year and what decision they make with McDaniels. Cause again, you were in the camp of McDaniels should have been gone last year as a one and done coach. And uh, I wasn't as aggressively pushing the needle on it. I said, I can defend firing him and I can defend keeping him in both cases for the Raiders. Uh, it'll just be interesting to see what they do. If the most likely outcome comes through, which is six or seven wins and the Raiders are finishing one in five against the AFC West and last place in the division this year. Again, like my whole argument with the McDaniels thing is the fact that they got worse coming off an interim head coach. They had less drama and still got worse. They got better players and still got worse. And they blew all those leads, which is something that ultimately you do hold against a head coach when the team doesn't come out with the same energy after halftime. Those are things that I held against McDaniels. Now he's got a quarterback that at least he thinks fits his scheme better. So we'll see how he uses Jimmy Garoppolo and if he could use Jimmy Garoppolo to the best of his abilities and knock on wood again, Jimmy rooting for you. Just stay healthy. That's been the biggest knock on your career. Heck, if Jimmy Garoppolo stayed healthy, I don't think that we'd have the discussions that we have around him. Honestly, at the end of the day, his career would look a lot different than it does now. But anyway, guys, what are your thoughts on Jimmy Garoppolo with the Raiders this year? What kind of pressures do you think are on this Raiders team with Garoppolo at the helm. Leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on all our social medias from Juju and Kyle. Stay safe, happy, and healthy. We'll see you next time.